The day I learned about compound interest was the day my life changed forever. One day I was just sitting in my engineering economics class and my professor asked the class the $1 million question. Would you rather have a million dollars today or a penny doubled for the next 30 days? And of course the whole class is like, please, I want my million dollars today. What do you mean? Like, why would I want a penny doubled every day? That makes no sense. And the professor's like, okay, okay, all right, cool. Well, congratulations, you're all millionaires. Then the class kind of gets quiet. They're like, yeah, I knew I chose the right thing. And then he says, but you just missed out on $4,368,907.12. Yeah, that was literally 95% of the class's expressions. Their jaws dropped because 95% of them were the ones who were saying they wanted the $1 million. But then he broke it down mathematically for the entire class and he showed us this diagram that I'm showing you on screen right now. He said, see, as you can see, the person who decided to get the penny doubled every single day, they're not gonna see results early on at all like even by day 15 it doesn't look like they're getting much traction at all and it looks pretty helpless for them to ever even get close to the million dollars that was initially offered and it's honestly really not until day 27 that you realize that you're getting results and you realize that if you actually double that number you'll be over the one million dollars but wait a minute then you realize that you actually have three days left of doubling and by day 30 you realize that you actually made the correct decision. That's compound interest. And in the wise words of Albert Einstein, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it, earns it. He who doesn't, pays it. You can think of compound interest as interest on top of interest, and that's exactly why we have such large amounts of debt that seems to go up at an exponential rate when you're not paying the amount you borrowed on time. But this is also the reason why your investments go up so much after investing for years and years and years at a time. In short, this is why we have the rich and the poor. Keep on watching. And that was literally my introduction to compound interest. And I became so intrigued and so fascinated by it. And I just had to learn more because it changed my entire perception of money. So I even started studying it outside of class and doing more research on the internet and practicing it and looking into good investments and all this stuff. And it's all because I used to think that making money was all about how much you made per hour. Sad, I know, but that was all I knew. All I knew was get a raise at work and you'll be fine. Get some overtime or get a side hustle. I didn't know about passive income. I didn't know about compound interest. And that's what I wanna show you in this video because it was a real eye opener for me. And the reason that we have the rich and the poor is simply because this stuff isn't being taught to the masses. It's just not. And if more people knew and understood how compound interest worked, the world would be a lot wealthier. And before I really got into compound interest, I had to do some research and like I had so many questions up front and the biggest thing that I wanted to know was how. How to earn compound interest, how to make your money compound, how to invest your money. But the biggest thing I wanted to know was how does compound interest work? And here is what I found. So there's a concept out there called the time value of money. And it basically just says that a dollar today is worth more than a dollar is tomorrow. The reason the time value of money is important in all of this is because it's the reason why we have interest in the first place, but it also plays a huge role when it comes to deciding stuff when it comes to interest. For example, if I were to tell you right now, hey, do you want me to give you $200 today or $200 a year from now? it would make the most sense to take $200 today because a year from now, $200 might be worth $205. So me giving it to you later would hinder you in gaining a potential $5 on top of that initial $200. Another example would be when it comes to investing, it makes a lot more sense to invest $200 now as opposed to investing $200 a year from now, because the money that that $200 could have gained within that year is gone. And that right there sums up the time value of money. Then on top of this, you have something called inflation. The very reason that milk used to be 49 cents in the 1960s 
And now, at least in my area, it's $3.54 for a gallon of milk. You see how it went up so far because of inflation, which is typically adjusted between 2 and 3% per year. So the price of goods and services goes up due to inflation on top of the time value of money, on top of interest, on top of compound interest. So these all coincide and that's how you turn $1 into $10. And that's why the rich continue to get richer. Why? Because they've done this over and over and over again. Let's say you're 20 years old right now and you invest $100 into an investment that historically gives you the returns of about 7.2% per year and it's also adjusted for inflation and based off of your dividends, you just reinvest your dividends into the same money, that money compounds and it will turn from $1 into $10 within 30 years, which means your initial investment of $100 will turn into $1,000 within those 30 years. Think about if you invested that $100 every single month for your entire career for those 30 years, think about how much money that's gonna be. Think about the millions of dollars you could have. Think about that next time you go out and buy something that you don't need for $100 because if you buy that today, tomorrow, it's not gonna be worth as much. Think about it, if you, if you paid for a $100 pair of shoes that you don't necessarily need or you bought a video game that with the expansion pack and all is $100 or if you just bought some clothing that costs $100 period, tomorrow that $100 isn't gonna have the same value as it has today. A year from now, that $100 isn't gonna have the same value that it has today. A year from now, that $100 that you paid for entertainment is now worth $110. Meanwhile, the items that you bought for $100 have depreciated to the point where now they're only worth $85. So how much money did you really lose in that scenario? That's why it makes a lot of sense to think of your money in terms of how much it will be worth in the future as opposed to how much it's worth right now. Because now, in the future, the equivalent to $100 of today is $110, which means that $100 does not have the buying power it used to have. That's why I always stress to save what you can save and then invest that so that you can have the best financial future you can possibly have. And a lot of people just aren't doing it. And that's also why it's important to have 401ks because that money compounds over time. Think of compound interest like this. First of all, you have to understand simple interest. Let's say I put $100 in the bank today and let's say the bank for some reason had a 5% interest rate on the money that you put in there per year. So let's say a year goes by and I gain $5 on that $100. Well, the way simple interest works is that principle of $100 is going to continue to gain $5 per year. So when I initially put it in, it's just $100. Then one year goes by, it's $105. Another year goes by, it's $110. Whereas if it's compound interest, the money that your money gains off of that interest also gains interest. So to make that a little less confusing, you have the $100 in the bank, a year goes by, now it's $105. Another year goes by. Now, keep in mind, it's 5%, so that $5 that you earned on top of that $100 now gains its own interest. So 5% of $5 is 25 cents. So. Now you have $105.25 plus 5% on your principal, which is $110.25. And that is how compound interest works. And there's a formula for it, and I can show it on the screen now, but honestly, um, you, you're never going to really have to do the math yourself. The banks are going to do that for you or whatever investments are going to do that for you. But you just need to understand the power behind compound interest. It's much greater than simple interest and just your principal's gaining a certain percentage every year. When it compounds, that's where the money is really made. Just like the example at the beginning of this video, that example was compound interest and the time value of money all in one. You get $1 million on the first day of the month, but then if you would be patient and wait to the 30th day in the month with the penny doubled, you see that you're basically, that's basically me asking you, hey, would you rather me give you $1 million today or $5 million and something dollars at the end of the month? The time value of money at that point, I mean, come on. So it makes a lot more sense to take the $5 million at the end of the month. So now you can actually use this as a tool if you ever have a decision to make as far as 
when you should take a certain amount of earnings. Like, uh, for example, if someone, this is a crazy extreme example, but if someone won a million dollars in the lottery and they were given the choice to receive the $1 million now or a year from now, again, it makes no sense to take the same exact amount a year from now when it'll be worth a lot more money a year from now. You could put that $1 million into, again, a bank that earns 5% interest, and then guess what? In that whole year you've had the million dollars in the bank, it's gained a whole $50,000. That's more than what a lot of people make in a year, by the way, as opposed to waiting for a full year to get the $1 million, and now you missed out on potentially $50,000 because the simple fact that you decided to wait a later day to get your $1 million. And that's how the time value of money works in conjunction with compound interest. This was just an eye opener for me because it changed my perception about money. I've always thought that the more you make an hour is, you know, pretty much how much you'll get paid this, how much will go into your 401k based off the percentage you choose. I had no idea there were these different types of streams of income, and these different types of investments, and these different types of ways to compound your interest intelligently. And if you invest in your stock market, and if you invest in the stock market intelligently, literally there are no limits. It's not about timing the stock market. It's not about waiting for it to crash. It's not about thinking it's at an all time high and not investing only for it to keep rising. No, invest where you can, when you can, with the most educated decision that you could possibly make when it comes to investing. Because we don't know if the stock market is gonna rise or if it's gonna fall. And sometimes your earnings will compound just based off of the simple fact that the market is up right now and you'll get more earnings than you've ever had before. Whereas sometimes there'll be all time lows and you might even lose some money. But the bottom line is now that you understand compound interest, you shouldn't fall prey to it because a lot of people have fallen prey to compound interest, especially when it comes to their credit cards. They have like a 20% interest rate and they owe a thousand dollars. Well, guess what? If you don't pay that money on time and you only barely pay a little bit, that, mo that money is going to keep compounding and it'll seem like you're never out of debt because it literally keeps compounding on top of itself and it's back to where it was because you didn't pay enough to get it down far enough to combat against that high interest rate. And this is important, especially when you're talking about building generational wealth, when you're talking about retiring, that's why it's so important to invest early on in your career. I mean, as soon as you're able to start with your 401k, that way you're not worried about maybe retiring or maybe not retiring. You don't know because if you wait 10 years after you started working to start investing in your 401k, well, you might retire. You might not. It just, it depends. And then when the, when you realize that the company also matches you at a certain percentage of your contribution, that's even more that your money is compounding on top of the interest that it's already gaining. So it's only beneficial to do this as early on as possible, especially when you consider the money that you're making today is not going to hold the same value tomorrow. So now that you understand compound interest, what are you going to do with this information? Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance so that you can grow yourself, grow your finances, so that you can control you, control your finances, and control your life because there's so many people who don't have control over their life, don't have control over their finances, and because of that, they are at a hindrance, whether it's in their relationships or whether it's in their professional life. It affects multiple areas of life and I'm here to help with that problem. So if you like this channel, if you like this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share this with a friend, comment for the algorithm, whatever it is that you have to do. But thank you so much for getting this far. Thank you for checking out this video. I will see you in the next one.